I've done what most people do, I've overpacked. <laughs> My carry-on is probably as heavy as anything that I've shipped so far, but I'm trying to walk with it to look like it's not that heavy, really. So when I finally get here, leaving from Omaha, Nebraska, where nothing leaves from Omaha and goes straight to anywhere. <laughs> finally got here, 8.30 in the morning, desperately tired, wrestle with it, I get it out. It's working, it's getting a little creaky, I get down the jet bridge, I get all the way up to where the attendant is, and the wheel breaks. So I'm thinking, okay, what do I do now? So I start to look around, see a guy coming by, I say, Excuse me, sir, would you please help me? I just need to get about 50 yards to that luggage shop over there. Takes a really long look at me and keeps on going. <laughs> and I think, okay. <laughs> but you know, I need some help. <laughs> so I continue. Next guy's coming along, I think. Sir, you know, I recognize that you're really busy. I'm sure that you're trying to get somewhere too. But could you really just help me for a moment? It's just 25 yards to the luggage shop right over there. Could you help me? He looks at me. He says, you look like you're big enough to handle that yourself. Uh-huh. And walks on down the road. So I'm thinking, have I landed in Las Vegas or West Hell? Because I'm thinking. I just might have a really rough time if I've been rejected two times in a row within five minutes of getting off the plane. So while I'm sitting there trying to figure what to do, a gentleman comes up and picks up my bag and he says, I see that you need some help. I know you need help. You're fat. Well, I mean, you're heavy. You know, solid. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how many more synonyms do we need <laughs> for peasant lip pump? So ultimately, my ego could stand more of a beating at my back. So I allowed him to assist me down to the luggage shop. And when we get to the luggage shop, I'm thinking, thank you, goodbye, goodbye. And he's just watching me, and I keep looking. And so the next thing that he does is he looks at me. And he says, obviously, I've said something to offend you. Obviously, I've said something that's politically incorrect. He said, you understand, of course, when I said that, I meant P-H-A-T. Yeah. For the uninitiated, pretty hot and tempting. <laughs> and when I said heavy, I said that because I was sitting behind you on the plane and I knew you had a nine pound brain. Okay. And when I said solid, it's like the earth. But you're the kind of person that I would like to get to know. So I take a moment and I realize my own human frailty that I have just been rushing down the miscommunication superhighway, so sure that the words he was saying were hurtful and offensive, and I take it all to heart. And so then I had the opportunity to step back for a moment and understand that one word can have so many different meanings to so many different people, and that's what brings us to our talk today the paralysis of political correctness.